Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing marvelously well. This episode, we're going to talk about why plugins suck. Hint, clickbait. Hello there. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And there is a notifications bell down there, which apparently sometimes works. And of course, you can go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list. Okay, so why the title? Well, because I get it. I open lots of sessions from lots of different people to mix over the years, and there are tons and tons of plugins all over it. This can be a good thing, and of course, it can be a bad thing. You've heard us talk about many times how sometimes you just mute all the plugins and it comes to life. Well, sometimes is the answer to that one. It sometimes works. We live in a time and a place now where there is so much accessibility to incredible things. You have plugins that can do everything. This is what I want to talk about. And it comes down to things like, you know, optionitis, you know, having too many options, all the things we talk about. If you look around this room here, you'll see over the last 20, 30 years of me being in the music industry, I have acquired a lot of stuff, starting with a large format console. I've got an SSL console. I have Poltec, four over there and two over there, Poltec EQs. I have Neve mic pre's. I have API mic pre's. I have, of course, BAE's mic pre's. I have a Kadak 12 channel console, a mythical U37. I have uh, all kinds of beautiful microphones, RCA microphones, AEIA microphones. I even have a tape machine. And then, of course, I have tons of beautiful other outboard and guitar amps and guitars. You get my point. I have all this beautiful, modern, vintage, anywhere in between equipment. So why am I waffling on about this? Well, all of this stuff imparts a sound when I'm recording. So what is the use of plugins? Well, plugins can do some of that. They can impart an extra sound when you're dealing with virtual instruments, when you're dealing with an inexpensive microphone without a nice mic pre, without a nice compressor, without all of the things that used to color it, without tape. So it's great to have access to all these incredible plugins. It totally is. It's amazing. It's wonderful. But what is your intention? If you are trying to get something that glues together and feels like a vintage recording, something you grew up loving, then you need to apply that ethic to it. Because the reality is, is when you used to mix a record in, say, the mid-90s or before, you go to a studio, they'd have an SSL console, they'd have two, three delay lines, they'd have two, three, four, maybe five reverbs, maybe they'd have some lexicon and a SPX 1000, some XPS 90s, all these different kinds of stuff, some Amex. But the reality was, is you were on a console, and on this one here, for instance, we have, we have six ways of sending here. And we can pan, we can have returns up here, we've got four stereo returns, and then of course you could return down some channels. Which, whichever way you look at it, we have a tiny fraction of what we have now in any DAW. It doesn't matter what DAW you're on. It doesn't matter if you're on Ableton at A, all the way up to, can't think of a DAW beginning with Z, but whatever, you get my point. It doesn't matter what DAW you're on. Now you have access to hundreds of plugins that can be used, hundreds of EQs, hundreds of compressors, hundreds of delays and reverbs, optionitis. Yeah, that's true, but it's less about the optionitis and more about the intention. When you listen to a record of, say, 30 years ago that you freak out and think sounds absolutely amazing, well, they were using a limited amount of equipment, a fraction of the amount of sounds that you have access to. So yes, optionitis is one way of talking about it, but the most important way and the positive way I can think of is making sure you know your intention. What is your intention? What are you trying to create? Just opening up a vocal and putting some EQs and some compression on it and some reverb and delay, it's, it's great, but what is in your mind? 
For me, when I'm sitting down with an artist for the first time working on a song, I paint a mental picture of how I want it to sound. And it influences every decision I make from the microphone placement, to the compressor, to the EQ, to the way it's going to sit with other instruments. All of this stuff is played out in my mind. And I love references, for instance. You know, I just did a video on The Pretenders. We had a great time doing that. Do you know how many times that's come up in my mind? Hundreds and hundreds of times over the years when I'm producing, because I love that bass tone. And so I'm thinking to myself, how can I get that big Pete Fonden precision? Dun, 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 dun. Well, I've got to leave room for it. So that sound is there in my mind. Then I'm like, well, the guitar sound has to sit around that. Intention, intention, intention. Optionitis is the excuse that we use for not having intention. I'm gonna say that one more time. Big letters across the screen here. Optionitis is the excuse we use for not having intention. Think about that. If you've got an intention and you know what you're doing, optionitis doesn't even come up. Saying this plugin doesn't, get it complaining about this stuff does not come out. You need the intention. You need to decide what you're going to do. For instance, if you want to sound like ACDC and you want an ACDC drum sound, and you want ACDC guitar sounds, well, you've got to limit your choices. Maybe you're going to want to track using Neve mic pre's. Whoa, what are you talking about, Warren? I don't, can't afford a Neve. Well, use some Neve style emulations. If you get a kick drum and boost it at 60 hertz, which is a default setting on a Neve, and then you cut 220, it starts to sound a little bit like a classic kick drum. If you take a bit of 220 and boost it on the bottom of the snare, it starts to get a little bit of body and those two things start to glue together. The reality is, is they weren't sitting there with fully sweepable EQs. They were using fixed EQ stuff. So limiting yourself to maybe only using Neve style plugins when you're EQing your recordings might actually help you get that sound. There you go, intention. If you're using fully sweepable, absolutely perfect, you know, um, you're using the most amazing multi-band compressing, dynamic EQ, blah, 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 you're not gonna get the sound that you're going after. You are giving yourself too many options. And before you know it, everything starts to sound completely homogenized and everything fits together so beautifully and perfectly and everything that it loses the intention, the actual excitement of a song. So make sure you have the intention before you even start recording. What is it you're going for? What is in your mind? Are you listening to a vocal acoustic sound? Okay. You could just generically record it and then use all the fancy plugins to pull out any peaks and troughs and all that kind of stuff. Or maybe you pull the microphone back a bit on the guitarist and you get a little bit of room tone in there. And maybe you create an intention, a sound that sounds good. Maybe you don't have an outboard compressor, but maybe you can just put a compressor, like an old school sounding thing on there, just to see what it would do on the initial tracking. Track through it, see if that inspires you. There's one good thing I like about plugins like UAD. I know they're not cheap, but you can track through them. And in the situations where we've had options like that, you can track through them and you can impart a sound and it is inspiring. It helps with the intention. I know it's really difficult for many people because they might be using really inexpensive IOs that have massive latency. And as soon as you load on plugins on there, it all falls apart. However, move as quickly as you can. Put down the guitar part and then see if you can shape the sound because there's a lot of discussion here about like, oh, leave everything to the mix process to the end. Sure, I get that. But you know what? None of the great records we love were made that way. None of them. Because the producer and the engineer had an intention, committed a sound, got a sound, and then when the next sound came in, they knew how to fit it around it. They didn't just record everything flat, everything super loud, and then go, don't worry, the mixer will figure it out. Because you know what? The mixer doesn't understand, what's that word again? What your intention was. They have absolutely no idea. They just get 20 guitars 
on this side, 20 guitar parts on that side, a bass, a drum kit, tons of programming, like keys all over the place, some string section coming in, some background vocals, you know, all this stuff going on. And you're like, I don't know, make it sound good. We've all been there. We've all made the mistake. It comes back to that word, intention, intention, intention. Make sure you're producing and recording with intention in mind. I'll repeat this again. There's a lot of talk about leaving the mix to the end. Sure. But if you created intention the whole way, you will find mixing to be very, very easy. I'm going to ask you this. See if people get to this far into the video. Answer down below. How many times have you watched an interview with an old school mixer and they say this phrase or a variation on it? I don't know what these kids are doing anymore. They just send me a hundred tracks and nothing makes any sense and all this kind of stuff. Well, it's an interesting comment because it plays into what we're talking about, about not having intention, but it also shows you something. Think about this for a second. It shows you they were used to not doing very much. They were used to getting 24 tracks of which the intention was really obvious. Everything was focused. Everything fit together and made sense. And then they were essentially putting some icing on the cake. They were like, I'm just going to make this a little brighter. I'm going to cut some low mids out of the drums here. Maybe stick in a snare sample, a bit of a kick sample on here, a bit of extra reverb, change the verb in the chorus, give me my money and my point. I mean, all joking aside, that was our business, especially through the 90s and the early 2000s. It was a lot of people putting a crap ton of time and effort in creating intention for the mix to be easy. Now, for many people, mixing is hard because the production and the engineering doesn't have, what's that word again? Intention. Doesn't know what it's trying to do. Doesn't know where it's trying to commit. So most of the time, we don't have five, six, seven thousand dollars now to a song to send to a mixer to sprinkle some fairy dust on it. We are mixing that stuff ourselves. Let's help ourselves out. Get some intention, whether it be classic rock, whether it be modern metal, whether it be country, whether it be EDM, work with intention. There's actually a part of me that thinks actually some of the younger guys and girls that are creating EDM have more intention than in any other genre. What? Shock? Horror? No, because they are producing and engineering as they go, and they're also mixing far more as they go. So they'll come in, they'll build a sound, they'll make it absolutely massive, and then they'll try and fit some other ideas in. So they'll have to EQ and compress and make room and build around it. They are actually using a lot of intention. It's not an age thing. It doesn't matter if you're 7 or 70. It doesn't matter if you're 8 or 80. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can still record with intention. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. I know optionitis, I understand it, I know it's a catchphrase, I've seen lots of videos with that in the title or inside of it, and I get it, but it's an excuse for not having intention. If you know what you're looking for, you know what you're listening for, and you're creating sounds, and you're making sure they weave together and work together, that the parts are recorded with intention, the intention there will create something amazing. Remember, intention, intention, and intention. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. I hope you intend to leave a comment below. This is a place where we come. Obviously, I try to read as many comments as I can and respond to them. I really appreciate everybody's time and energy that they give to helping each other out. Please get involved in a discussion. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. See you all again very soon. So long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, au revoir, goodbye, farewell, adios. Mm -hmm.